Hey everyone, welcome back. Eric has had to hop off the line, but Matt and Joey have joined. So uh, ready to get back into it and, and chat a little bit of golf from last weekend and uh, the weekend <clears throat> coming up. Mr. Fontaine, where are you dialing in from and, and what are you sipping on? Uh, we're in my apartment in Connecticut here. Uh, it's 43 degrees out. The quick thunderstorm today brought the temperature down about 30 degrees from what it was this past weekend. So just your typical New England weather, but uh, I got a dogfish Sunday feels. I don't know. Shout out a uh, friend of the program, TJ, was up at his place this weekend playing a little bit of golf. And, uh, you know, he's a supplier now, so he hooked me up. He's working for Boston Beer, so gave me a little sample action here, and it's uh, pretty tasty. It's, uh, I don't know, I don't think it's an IPA, but there's a lot of citrus in it. It's pretty interesting beer. I don't know. It's pretty good, though. Something different. Uh, Joey, what do you got? Um, I'm back on the water train tonight, boys. No drink, uh, back home in good old Schenectady, New York. Uh, I made the trip up finally back to the cold weather. I am not enjoying it as, uh, it's been rainy and cold all day. So luckily, uh, got to play some golf in the previous days, but back home and back to New Hampshire on Tuesday, Wednesday coming up. So yeah, looking forward to the season to start though. Um, what do we think? Dive right into the, uh, Harbor Town. Yeah, let's dive it in. Historic week at Harbor Town. Stuart Sake, 47 years old. Could have passed for 27 this weekend. Just getting it done. Uh, 36 and, and 72 hole records for him. Um, 16 under through 36 holes and then 18 under to, to finish it off. And and really no one challenged him. Um, you know, Morikawa was playing in that last group, but from start to finish, you know, I think he either shared the lead on, on day one or was right around it and then just pretty much duplicated his round on, on Friday afternoon. And from then on, really, no one was no one was around him. So uh, fun to watch him kind of just absolutely dominate. And, it, you know, a little bit of a resurgence from Stuart Sink, right? He hadn't won since winning the Open in 2009, I believe, and now to win two times in, in 2021. Or I think he might have won the Open in 2010. But – um. Or, or whatever it was, but to win two times here, win Safeway earlier this year up in Napa, and then to, to win Harbor Town on, on a historic golf course and, and on, a, on a really well-respected golf course on the PGA Tour. Um, I think we, we spoke about it a little bit last week, how it, it's a tough spot in the schedule, but was really happy with the field kind of that ended up going there and, and, and led to a, a fun weekend of golf. And Matt, did you get an opportunity to watch a little bit? It was kind of a unique situation, too, because Stuart Sink has got his son on the bag, um, 24-year-old, and uh, Morikawa, was, Morikawa was 24 as well. So it was kind of like a – that was the talking point going into Sunday afternoon. Um, but w- did you get an opportunity to watch, and, and did you see kind of any of the week? Yeah, I didn't watch as much as I would have liked, but I did want to get that point in with his son on the bag. I think, you know – that is kind of allowed him, I think, or maybe led to, I don't know, maybe I'm looking too much into it, but, you know, since his son's been on the bag, two wins, right? I mean, it's it's a nice little, it probably just, you know, takes a little bit of pressure off and just lets him have a little more fun out there, you know, just enjoying it with his son. And I think it's, you know, Harbor Town is a golf course that we talked last week. I think it's just an awesome course that brings everybody into consideration for a winner, right? I mean, Stuart Sink over, I think the last, handful of years has been kind of trending back I think after the open win he kind of fell off the face of the earth a bit but starting to get some more solid finishes in the mix not nothing close to winning but now he's winning again here twice in 2021 or I guess the Safeway might have been in 2020 but you know 21 season um winning a couple times and I think it's awesome having you know a son on the bag it must be such a cool experience for the both of them to you know go through that together and you know just to share in that you know life you know it's it's such a amazing achievement to win on the PGA Tour I know Stuart Sink's been you know around forever so it's not as life-changing for him at this point in his career but for his son I mean you know not to get the money involved but like that's some serious cash he's getting as a 24 year old catching those checks for caddy and for his dad so that must be really cool to kind of have it be like a family affair and you know get it done at you know the field like I think we talked about that field was sneaky strong I mean DJ's in there, more cows in there, you know, they might not have all been there on the weekend, but, you know, going into the week, it wasn't like, you know, it's a cakewalk of a week and just anybody can win just by teeing it up. So pretty impressive stuff out of him. Like I said, didn't do it on accident, 18 under the 72 hole record, 36 hole scoring record. So good stuff out of Stewie Sink this week. And uh, Joe, you got anything more to add on to that? You watched it all this weekend? 
No, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't able to watch it. Uh, as always, you kind of hit the nail on the head. I think that's the saying, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's how that, that, that's how it goes, right? No. Um, it, it's. I mean, it's awesome. You know, his son on the bag. I, I think he said it well. Like, I think it just kind of helps free him up a little bit and helps him just enjoy it a little bit more, right? I think it goes back even to Lee Westwood when he was playing well for those couple tournaments. You know, having boys, his wife or fiance, whatever it is, on the bag. It's just kind of helps him enjoy the game a little bit more playing at such an older age and the rest of the field. Right. And the guys that they're beating out are, they're a bunch of players. Right. Um, besides that, the Hilton had the course itself. It just looks like such a cool golf course to play. And I kind of wish when I was on my way up, I maybe tried to stop their granted. I probably wouldn't have been able to with the, that tournament coming up, but it's definitely a course that I'd love to get to in the future sometime. So Joey. Director of golf is from Springfield, Mass. Is from it's he's from the Berkshires, but he went to Springfield College at uh. Now you're speaking our at, language at Harbor Town. I can't remember his first name, but his last name's Farrell. Um, yeah. yeah. So he's yeah. a he's a really nice guy. I remember it was a really funny story actually of when we were in there. We were down there just for a week. My dad had like uh, won like a charity thing or, or whatever, yeah. and we got a condo down there and he walked in there with like a Red Sox polo and the director of golf was in there just, just like tapped him on the shoulder or whatever. It's like, Hey, like you from new England, blah, blah, blah. And you know, my dad and mom went to school at West New England as well. And um, they actually knew the director of golf's roommate at Springfield college. So huh. like, he like comped around and we got to chat and, and whatever. So um, definitely some new England vibes down there at, at Harbor town with, with Mr. Farrell running the show. Um, but yeah, but really cool golf course. And, so do you guys think, or do you think Stuart Sink's paying, you know, paying his son the full 10% or is he? I would hope he's paying him more. <laughs> I mean, you got to think, you gotta think he's covering all expenses though. Yeah. While they travel too. Yeah. yeah. I, would hope I mean, so. maybe, maybe he haircuts it and throws a little bit in a little trust fund or something. Cause the kid's 24, right? You can't be yeah. like, can't just give a 24 year old, you know, half a million dollars, <laughs> you know, ah. I mean, not that he gets that per tournament but you know throughout this season it'd probably be around there you know like with two wins and he's played he played really well at um he top 10 at the masters he was he was kind of up there so i mean a lot of cash to be given a 24 year old so i gotta imagine he's haircutting it a little bit and you know being like hey you get this you know to buy your house or you know something like that because you can't just you can't give a 24 year old that much cash it just would not go well for anybody involved like i can only imagine how i, I mean saying. I mean, Sung J.M. is what, 22, 23? Yeah, but he like, got... lives with his mom still, didn't he? Until like this he just, year? He, he just bought <laughs> a house. His mom was 100% him. like, give me the money. I'm, I'm taking <laughs> care of that. You ain't doing shit with that, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. think even Jordan, when he was 22 and he just won the Masters, he was like, yeah, he made like 22 mil the year he was 22. It's just like, it's absolutely I bomb. feel like, though, when you're the player, you have it's a little different. And you have like a team around you that like – yeah you have all this you have like a system around you where when you're the caddy i mean you do whatever you want with them you know like i feel like there's less there's less of a team around you to keep an eye on you granted yeah caddying for his dad so his dad's gonna fill that role but like i feel like it's a it's a little different there's a less there's less uh absolutely no 100 percent, 100 and there's less people watching too you know like if jordan went out and spent five mil like after you know that year after he won all that shit like somebody would have been you know the media would have been on his ass about look at this idiot you know where I think Stuart Sink's son could, you know, go blow a hundred grand on whatever and nobody would blink an eye, except for no, absolutely yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. But speaking of resurgence, Stuart Sink got it done there and you know, is is played really well this year. Lydia Co. Lote Championship. Um, you know, hasn't won in three plus years, was one of the most prolif- prolific winners in LPGA tour history from the time she was 18 to, to 20 in that region there, um, or 21 or whatever she was for that, that stretch winning, you know, almost 15 times on tour and to, to struggle the way she has the last few years. And she's ascended up the, the world ranking. She was like almost in the top 10 going into this week. So the fact that you can get all the way up to, I think 11th where she was without winning and just continually playing, playing, well, you knew she was going to break through at some point. Yeah. One of the most respected players on the LPGA tour and, and definitely a, a friend to many out there as well. I think it's that that could definitely be seen when she, when she got it done this week. A lot of people reached out and kind of you know talked about how 
how much hard work she's put in, how much she means to the tour and great to kind of see her get it done. But 28 under out there. I watched quite, a, I actually watched quite a bit of golf on Friday night because they're out there in Hawaii. So it was kind of on the, yeah. um, the prime time. So when I got back from dinner late, we, I was watching a little bit of it and golf course itself was really cool. A lot of short, quite a few short par fours and quite a few short par fives. So tons of scoring opportunities. And, um, that could be seen. I think Lydia Ko shot 31 or 32 on the back nine on Friday, Saturday, the last two days of the tournament. So like leaving nothing to chance, just like getting it done, uh, mm-hmm. on the back nine on the last two days on the, on the week, on the weekend per se, um, is pretty great. I know Matt, you've kind of followed the LPG tour quite a bit. Um, you know, the last six months here really kicking off with that U S women's open and, and kind of what we're going on, but, What's your, what's your take on Lydia Ko? And, you know, do we see her getting a bunch more wins this year, kind of sticking around the normal, the normal people were at top, right? Nellie quarter was, was hanging around as well. And, and some of the other studs, but um, kind of, yeah. Give us some foresight on, on Lydia Ko here. Yeah. I mean, I think it starts back with that U S open. I mean, she kind of back ended into a top five there. I want to say she kind of had a really strong weekend to kind of that. Cause that, that one played tough. Like that was a tough golf course that weekend or week, whatever you want to call it, for that the Women's US Open back in December. Um, and she kind of not really in the mix the first two days and then had a super solid weekend to really get herself back into the top 10 or top five, whatever it ended up being. And then at the most recent major, uh, I don't even remember the name of it, to be honest, I'm butchering it. A&A. a and yeah, the A&A. She shot like 10 under on Sunday and almost snuck one out there. Like she was nine under through 11 holes or something absolutely ridiculous so you you were seeing signs of it like her reasserting herself in these super strong fields super big events like she had it you know because like in your majors if you're playing well in majors you're battling your nerves and everything so like when your swing's a little sketchy the second the nerves come into play that's you you know like it exposes you right one way or the other so for her to do it in those big stages just knew that she was really confident with what she's doing and it was like She was doing what she was feeling, what she was thinking, whatever. It was all kind of coming together. So you knew this kind of win was around the corner. And to do it, like you said, in the fashion she did, 28 under is just ridiculous. Fucking firepower. I don't know if it's par 72, 71, 70, whatever, but doesn't really matter. I mean, 27 under average right throughout the week. I just can't fathom a life where I shoot five under, let's say, right, for four days in a row and lose by eight. That's just that does, doesn't compute for me. I don't know. It, that doesn't work. That doesn't fire right for me. But that's just all more credit to her. I mean, like you said, really historic start to her career. I think she won, like you said, 14, 15 times in like three or four years to start her career, which is absurd, especially at the age she did it at. Kind of fell out of it a little bit, whatever, found herself, found her game, found herself again. And I certainly expect this not to be a one and done kind of deal. I mean, she's still young considerably right i mean for golf purposes i mean she can still play another 10 15 years honestly i mean she's was she 27 Um, you know like (laughs) not even maybe like (laughs) whatever she is it's like i don't think this is like a flash in the pan i think based on like the you know playing well in those majors and kind of throughout the season it's not like she's been missing cuts and shit like the game's there it's trending it's trending it's trending kind of similar to jordan to be honest right i mean he's another guy that kind of broke a drought this recently and she kind of is trending somewhat along there and we've really said like you know he's he's back like he's going to compete on courses that fit him for Lydia Ko I think any course fits her um but he's 23 he's 23 yeah okay yeah so they yeah they let her they let her play so she won the she won the U.S. women's am when she was like 15 and then she like won on the she won on the LPGA tour as an am and then they like gave her status because they're like, uh-huh. you know, for a while they, they, what they did was like say you have to be 18 to play on the LPGA tour. Same thing they do on the PGA tour as well. Uh-huh. But I think when she won, when she won that second time, they're like, like, fuck, we like, yeah, not let her she, play. <laughs> she, she needs to be on the tour. And then she won 13. whatever. Yeah. yeah. She won, <laughs> she won 14 times before, or, you know, before 2016 or whatever the case may be so just craziness so yeah i don't, I don't think this week around. is her week she's currently six over just wanted to throw that out there she probably was celebrating you know she just <laughs> got off a four uh, like 1200 day wind drought 
her, her first her, her first win of age to celebrate yeah. <laughs> she yeah. doesn't know how to handle that yeah <laughs> nah, geez but yeah right. first, first win <laughs> geez first win that you can actually truly celebrate for that's you know not everybody's built for that you know yeah. you, it's tough to bounce back and play a, a professional level golf course and try and contend again right after so you know everybody gets a pass for one week yeah oh, I mean, she 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 was in she was in hawaii yeah. so you know she had some like you know she just stayed there sunday and hung out and boozed her face off yeah. at whatever resort they're staying at then you fly to la and then you got to go play like a firm fast golf course out there playing at wilshire this wilshire this week it's like mentally i mean she's That's probably cool. i she's probably ready to just get back to Florida or wherever she lives and like chill for a week. So probably not the worst thing that she's probably going to miss the cut. <laughs> yeah. Get back home and enjoy the win and, you know, ease, start grinding again after, you know, three, four days of chilling, but yeah. other LPGA tour news, I want to give a shout out to those new hoodies they got going. Those, oh, those are fire. Are yeah. I need to get one of those. I've been trying to get one. Can't get them in my size. The second they go on sale, the first thing they go are the XLs and the larges and, I'm somewhere in that room, that window, and I'm not gonna. They're, I think they're unisex too, so there's no way I'm taking a chance on a medium. There's no way that's gonna fit me. Um, so yeah, those things are absolute flames. I think that's an awesome way to just get social media buzzing about the LPGA tour, and you know, you need eyes, right? I, there's no such thing as bad eyes, especially when it's just simply being like, hey, this is like grow the game. This is like lady golf. This is our sweatshirt. This is whatever. Yeah, NBA players wearing it, like all these people wearing it. I need one of those. I got to hopefully they like restock again, maybe this week or end the next end of this week, whatever it is. Um, but I just want to give those a shout out because I think those are awesome. And I think it's a great way. It's to crazy. Just... It literally started with, I forget the player who was wearing it. But... The Warriors, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's nuts. It, it, it's really all started because of him. And right, like, and you talk about the eyes, Fontaine, right? So, like, I just look quickly on Instagram. The LPGA Tour official account has less than 300,000 followers. <laughs> Justin Thomas puts out on his post the other day, he got, he got a, like, a sweatshirt for him and his girlfriend. He's got over a million followers, right? Four, time more, four times more people are now going to see that sweatshirt than if they were to just post that same thing on the LPGA Tour page. So, the fact that you have guys like Justin Thomas and the guard there for the Warriors that that put it out there, like every single time that that gets shown across these other platforms, then that's some more eyes on the LPGA Tour and, and what they're doing. And clearly, we, as kind of shown by what Lydia Ko did this weekend, like just ungodly ability on the golf course and stuff that like we can't even fathom. So, um, you know, good that that's bringing to light. And I, I don't know if is it like if a portion of them is going to some sort of charity or if it's just kind of growing, whatever, but it really doesn't matter because it's kind of, you know, the ultimate goal is to, to grow the LPJ tour and, and grow the eyes that are, that are looking at it. Mm-hmm. Well, let's, let's jump in. You know, we talked a little bit, the LPJ tours at Wilshire this week and um, another Wednesday through Saturday. Interestingly enough, I'm not sure what's going on there. And I'm not sure why uh, Mike Juan, when he was the commissioner there, put that together. Um, but we might have to ask someone about that. It's uh, it, it's a little interesting. But Zara Classic on the PGA Tour this week, team event in New Orleans. Um, you know, us here at Bogey Proof, we're going to be sipping on a couple. Uh, how do we? What do we call it? We called it the the voodoo uh, the the voodoo vodka voodoo. the voodoo vodka. So be on the lookout for a post and learn how to make that voodoo vodka. Um, there's going to be, there's going to be some colors of new Orleans in there. So you'll have a little, <laughs> little yellow, little green, little purple. Um, so be on lookout for that listeners. Um, but yeah, fun team event, two man event, uh, TPC, Louisiana, pretty close to new Orleans. And I think it's a fun event first of all. So we get an interesting field with some studs in there, but also, also like some champions tour guys and some people, um, that kind of don't have status anymore, but they do a lot of exemptions to get some unique people in. And they also will bring some people in from the European tour and some Asian tour as well. Um, but it's just a wild week, Matt, what's kind of your take on, on this tournament in general? Like we got music on the first tee. What, yeah. what do you think about that? But like, it definitely an exciting week for sure. Yeah. I think it's really close to being one of those things like the match play that people love and like want more of it, whatever. Like it's really close. Cause I do think, 
they need to and you know they need to try stuff like this so we can't ask for them to mix it up with the 72 old stroke play and then when they do be like this sucks you know like they need to try and you know work work it out with a different format like this and you know they have that little thing the the greg norman shootout whatever they call it at tibby in in the winter that's QBC, similar to this yeah. but like it's such a limited field that it doesn't get the full attention that the zurich will um but yeah i mean i think a lot of it's good, but there is some things that I think either I don't really love, like the music on the first tee thing. Like, I don't know. It's not baseball. Like, you don't need to walk up to then mm-hmm. just sit there and then go through your pre-shot routine and, like, hit a full iron in the middle of the fairway. You know, like, it just doesn't – it doesn't work. I don't know. Like, I'd rather them just do, like, crazy – like, you know, like, Ryder Cup announcements, you know, like, you know, representing whatever – you know make up a team name i don't know do something different the music just they tried it starting back in 2018 or 2017 whenever they started it and 99 percent of them was just like awkward you know like i think kids had a good yeah. one like he had like future going or something and like yeah it, they had slippery they had, they had the Mig- they had migos yeah yeah <laughs> slippery yeah. yeah so like and that works for a guy like kids because he's so well known for bitch being like for just being like a guy you know like a, a whatever like ain't a hobby he drank that you know there's that classic wing foot story of him drinking 17 beers and on the 17th hole there it's like a 240 yard par three hits it to like four feet like basically hammered right i mean you can't drink 17 beers and be sober so <laughs> does that and says it ain't a hobby fellows like he's got that kind of reputation so like he can get away with something like that where every other guy that stands at t-box they try to play that music it's like ew, like a little cringe here man this is weird i don't know i don't like it like can you just hit your ball and go back to what you're good at like this music thing is weird so I don't love that, but I do appreciate the team event and like mixing up the format, getting some different, like you said, you get a lot of different players in here that you normally don't see. And like, it's just a totally different feel to a golf tournament, which I really like appreciate. And like, you got to mix up the 72 old stroke play. I know that's like how you get, that's how you truly find who plays the best golf is like making them put it in the hole for 72 straight holes. But when you do it, you know, 40 times a year, 28 times a year, how many t- tournaments they have a year on the PGA tour, you got to mix it up every once in a while. Um, they do the format here this week. It's uh, four ball, which is like a best ball, which you see in Ryder Cups. And then they also do the alternate shot, which you see in Ryder Cups. So it's best ball, alternate, best ball, alternate for Friday or Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, which is nice to see, you know, you mix it up. You got to keep people guessing. I mean, you're going to see crazy low scores on that first day to kind of grab everybody's attention. And then you're going to see a little bit of battling, a little bit more grinding come alternate shot. Um, which I think, you know, plays out well. And then it makes Sunday really interesting because you're not just sitting there being like, okay, who's going to make the most 20 footers for birdie instead of having this kick-ins on every hole and have to shoot 60 to win on Sunday. Um, I think it leads to a little bit of carnage just to keep people on their toes on Sunday. So I kind of like the setup. My only like recommendation or like what I wish they would do is Thursday, Friday stroke play then or even thursday stroke play then seed people and do match play or like cut the cut it small enough where you don't have to add an extra round and make a little match play out of it because i think the match play is always a hit you know that dell match play they do in texas and i think you could finagle it in with this without you know risking you know losing your top guys like they always say that's why they don't do match play all the time or they don't do the bracket style because if your top four guys in the world if a couple of them lose early you lose interest If you have this, you have partners, you have teams, you have so much more guys involved that if you you could bracket it off, I feel like, and just run it from Friday on or whatever day on. Um, I don't know how, like, you know, logistically speaking, I'm sure it's like a pain in the ass. That's why it hasn't happened. But I think that would be like next level because everybody loves playing four balls, right? It's like, let's see what these guys do with a four ball. Like, let's see them kind of you know, go out there, see how low they can go on, you know, qualifying as us non-pros call it, see where they end up seeding and then, you know, see a little match play battle from there because that's why people love the Ryder Cup is the, the match play atmosphere and intensity. I think, again, logistically, I'm sure it's not easy, but I, I would love to see them. They don't have to do it here, I guess. This is just, you know, triggering these thoughts, but something like that. I don't know. Joy, what do you think? You're more involved in like setting up tournaments. Is that an absolute nightmare? <laughs> I mean, these tournaments are a little different than the ones I set up. (laughs) (laughs) A lot more goes involved in uh, these tournaments here. But, I mean, 
I, I agree with you. I, I, I kind of like your idea of starting it as like a stroke play and turn it into a match play. I just think the thing with match play, like we just got done with that Dell match play. So I would like to see some time in between before yeah. doing another match play. You know, I love it. I do, but I do think this is a cool event because like you said, it, it's always 72 whole stroke play. It's just good to kind of change it up. Um, and it's also fun to see, you know, these guys going out with one of their buddies most of the time now. Right. And, you know, instead of a teammate that they're kind of partnered up with in the Ryder cup, not saying they're not friends or anything, but you know, they're just picking one of their buddies and they're going out to kind of compete and try to win a tournament. So I do, I think it's, you know, I think it's clever and it's a unique different type of format. Um, you know, I, I, I never really actually fully watch this tournament. Hopefully this weekend I'll be able to watch it a little bit more and get a little more involved with it. But I mean, as far and then as far as the walkout song goes, yeah, I'm I'm on the same page. This isn't baseball or anything like that. You don't need a walkout song. Just make a team name, do something different, norm, announce them normally. It's I get they're trying to do something that's different and try to stand out, but I think you can do that in a different way. You know, they gave it a shot, and I feel like most of the golf world, at least that I've seen, they're not that thrilled with it or like it or anything like that. So. That'd be my opinion on that. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to watch. Um, it's going to be fun with this little format, so we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Mike, what, what are your thoughts on the? On yeah, this? no, I, I agree with kind of a lot of things you guys said. I, I think I think it would be tough to put another, you know, to see a bunch of match play here, you know, really only a month after um, the match play, so maybe on a different portion of the season. Um, you know, the kind of what? Uh, yeah, somewhere in the fall. Um, I, I think it might be fun to uh, – on the days when they play four ball, when you have two people in the hole, I think there's an opportunity to maybe do some extra kind of fun things and, you know, maybe get some, I think, right. When you have team, when you have team tournaments, a lot of the interesting things that go on is the conversation that happens between not only between caddies and players, but also teams and strategy. So why not put a long drive out there and, and I'm just going to say like a long drive or or like, or like closest to the pin, um, for charity or something like that, like, and, and put an announcer on there and, and put them on the tee and, and chat through it or, or whatever the case may be, or make it, make a fucking 19th hole. I don't, like, I don't know. And, and make it a shootout or something like that, where they play for charity or, you know, I think they've done a good job, like on those Wednesdays playing those nine hole charity matches. Mm-hmm. This is like the perfect week to do like soup that thing up yeah. and maybe have like everybody play like, have everybody play nine holes like alternate shot or something like that or like three holes best ball three holes alternate shot three holes aggregate on like wednesday afternoon for like a charity shootout or something like that like something to just kick off kind of the something that makes it fun and interactive and and whatever for the year and then you can go into the 72 like hole score um you know for the for the for the two rounds i think you kind of have to keep a little bit of a semblance of a, of a normal scoring system as much as you can from this format, just because of how much they give up giving, yeah, that's, that's giving, giving two year exemptions and all the money that goes into this. Like, I think if you make it a little too gimmicky, then that becomes a little bit of an issue and, and probably something that people are going to bitch at because, you know, you know, these players on the PGA tour, a lot of them like to bitch. So I think like that's a, that's a piece of it as well. Um, but before we dive into picks, I want to just give some honorable mentions um, on a couple teams. Uh, none, none of us, no, none of the teams that we've picked, but a couple interesting ones. Joey's guy, the barn rat, he's playing this week with Arjun Atwal. Um, so you know, if he wasn't going to go with his his pick here, I think that was that was probably one A. We got Bubba Watson and and Scotty Scheffler playing. Was that it? Was that one of the matchups in a? Uh, down there in, in the Dell match play at some point. I'm wondering, I don't know if it was, but I don't know how they got teamed up. I seem that seems kind of like a little bit of an interesting. Um, Both got some pairing. long swings. I mean, Scotty Scheffler's got like that slide where his, his back foot hits his front foot on the, on the way. To the ball. And yeah. I mean, Bubba, you know, is known for just being very self-taught and more athletic than fundamental and stuff. So I don't know. Maybe they just found each other on the range. Like, wow, you do weird stuff too. You want to play? <laughs> yeah. And we just like find ourselves, but I think it, it also lends itself to like some, int- like we get a lot of international co- uh, combinations here too. Like Victor Hovland and Chris Ventura, both from Norway and both guys that played at Oklahoma state together. Like 
that's awesome that they get to play in this tournament together. Um, and just a couple of other random ones like Doc Redman and Sam Ryder are playing together. They're both Grayson guys. So, right. So you kind of get connections on that end too, whether it be clothing companies, other sponsorships, or, um, you know, maybe someone shares a manager. So they kind of get linked up there, but let's, let's dive into, into picks here. Joey, who do you like this week? Are you going chalk or are you going someone kind of outside the box? No, there's there's a couple groups that I was uh, in between, obviously, as you just stated, my boy, the rat. Um, you know, unfortunately, I know nothing about his partner, so it gives me no confidence in picking him. And, you know, the fact that the rat has been struggling, it seems, when he's playing. So it's tough to go with him right now, but, you know, he's always my honorable mention. Another another honorable mention, obviously, my boy, Sung J.M., uh, playing with, I don't even know how to just been on is what I'm just going to say. <laughs> so I uh, th- thought about going with him, but ultimately I'm going with a couple of ball strikers, uh, Cantlay and Shoffley. I just, I saw those two that were uh, paired up and uh, it's kind of two players that have been struggling to get that win on the PGA tour. So hopefully uh, this week they can get it done together, you know, and uh, see what they can do from there. Fontaine, who are you, who are you thinking about going with? Fontaine, before you go, imagine the person that, who engraves the trophy if it was M and on just like just <laughs> four, letters. <laughs> four, le- four letters I don't know if they do first names or anything I'm like when they would have two people on a team but yeah we got you know M and on defending champions here at the <laughs> classic that's funny but yeah uh good pick Joe I think those there's no way those two are totally out of it at any point yeah. they're just too good I mean, they're two of the top eight in the world, probably maybe 10 now yeah. after the Masters showing with Cantley. You might have dropped, but <laughs> that is also true. Uh, I'm going with the Australians. I just uh, maybe it's a little recency bias with the President's Cup, but um, Camp Smith and Leash, both guys that I think they, they probably, I think they were paired together at the President's Cup and played pretty well. They're a tough team to beat out there. Leash had a really solid week at the Masters. Cam Smith. You know, we've talked a lot about him the last few weeks, I feel like, with the Masters and last week at RBC. He's just a bulldog. I think he feeds off the kind of team environment. I think both of them are just, you know, gritty guys. I think, you know, I'll, t- I'll take my chance with them. And I am really hope that this week they take advantage of the kind of conversations that are, will be had, you know, strategy-wise between two players. It's always nice to hear player caddy, uh, player caddy combos. But you get two players, say, you know, one's kind of sketchy, one's right in the middle – par five you know these are the classic like four ball combos that you know we have with our partners when we play in these kind of tournaments like all right how you feeling over there like can I give this a whack can you make a par like stuff like that I hope you know and I'm hoping you know my guys aren't in any trouble at any point but you know I'd love to hear their Australian accents coming through and have a little combo like that I just think that this week gives such an opportunity to get awesome player to player combos and see different games kind of see how they sync up with each other and stuff like that. I just think no, that's good. That's just such an opportunity this week. If, if the PJ tour doesn't have microphones as close to these guys as possible when they're playing either, but it's alternate shot, you know, being like, okay, what number do you want to lay this up to want me to lay this up to stuff like that? Like, and seeing those guys execute, I think it'd be pretty cool. Like I right, hit it 168. So I have 105 in, and like they hit that number. Like that'd be pretty cool to see. Um, that's just, got to be a big opportunity big talking point in the you know behind the scenes this week for pga tour and pga tour live really hope they like get that stuff squared away and we get that extra insight on the player to player you know especially you know like mike said there's some really weird pairings out here or like not weird but like different skill levels right like victor hovland is a well-established player at this point not many people know who he's playing with it's like how do those games match up you know or like you know defending champs rom and ryan palmer Rom is elite, elite, elite. And Ryan Palmer's a you know veteran, like been around forever, plays really, really well, top 30 or 40 in the world, whatever it is, like well-renowned player, but not John Rom level. And they certainly don't hit it as far. You know, similarly, like John Rom kills the ball. So it's like I really hope that they give us that insight to see how these players work together and try and mesh their games together for this team style event. That's a big thing that I, I'm interested to see kind of how they talk through that and you know, work their way around the golf course together as a team in that alternate shot format, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. But uh, Mike, who do you got for picks? Yeah, I also want to shout out one of the 
worst combinations of swings we're going to have this week. We have Keegan Bradley and Brendan Steele playing together. Two of the, two of the tallest, lankiest, Ugh. awkward looking golf swings, but have produced some pretty good results over the last 10 years. I mean, they've yeah. been hanging around the PGA tour for a decade now. So um not really calling them out for, for being bad players or anything. I, Keegan Bradley's Massachusetts guy and respect his game major champion. Um, but just want to call that out kind of a unique one, but yeah. So I, I'll give Eric's too. I'll give Eric's pick first here. Eric went with the, the Englishman, Danny Willett and uh, Lord, Lord T rail hat. And uh, <laughs> so he's, he's riding the English wave here down in, down in new Orleans, you know, a little surprised soon with the English when New Orleans is a mostly a French town, I would say more than anything else, but, uh, you know, very unique pick by him, but definitely, you know, two of the better players in the world within the field. I think Danny Willett's up there pretty close to the top 50 top 75 in the world right now has has been a little bit better as of late. And obviously Terrell Hatton's had an unbelievable start to 2021, you know, winning a couple of times. I might put a prop it in for him to throw one of Danny Willett's clubs. This weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that thing. Bah, right in the water. <laughs> yeah. Or like, or, you know, or throw like Danny Willett's Callaway golf ball in the pond after they use it. Yeah. Or something like that. yeah. Danny's like, dude, I need that. And I need that for the next hole. <laughs> it's like, nah, we're using, we're, yeah, we're, we're going My back ball. to the, we're going back to the t- Taylor made or whatever we use. Yeah. Pin, or he probably plays Titleist cause he's a pin guy, Probably. but, uh, yeah, I'm going, you know, similar to, to Matt's pick as well. Joe, you know, Joey went with the Americans. Eric went with the Englishmen. Matt went with the Aussies. I'm going to the continent of Africa, going with the South Africans, Louis Oosthuizen and uh, Charles Schwartzel, two major champions who uh, have played in this event quite a few times together. And I just, you know, Louis Oosthuizen always hangs around and he's played well here at the Zurich Classic, both as, as an individual and as a team. Um and Charles Schwartzel, once he got that Greg Norman, like, uh, woven hat that he wears now, he's become a little bit of a different player as of late. Uh, so love the ball striking from Charles Schwartzel and, and Louis A. Stays and kind of always hangs around. But mm. any kind of any kind of parting thoughts uh, for the Zurich Classic, Mr. Fontaine? It's going to be a fun weekend down in down in New Orleans. But you think you're going to get an opportunity to watch a little bit, or is it going to – are we still kind of on the back end of the Masters and, and, and still chilling? Um, I think the team event has got me back in. I think I'm, I think I'm going to watch some golf, especially first couple of days, get a feel, see how these guys interact with each other and then fire in some live bets Friday night on who's going to get it done come Sunday. Probably that's, that's my approach. I think Sunday's weather looks kind of shitty up here. So I'll probably be able to watch almost all of it on Sunday, which is good. Saturday, I'm going to try and get out on the golf course, work on my game a little bit. Um, try and figure out why the hell I can't get anything near par the last like six rounds I played so we got some work to do we'll get back in the lab but Sunday I'm going to try and sit in front of the couch and watch you know 90 percent of what they're showing couple couple more installments of that wedge work Wednesday um you know we appreciate you putting that up and and giving us you know a little bit of insight as far as how to how to kind of you know hit that high shot hit that medium shot and hit that low one I think our listeners could learn a little something I I think we're going to make that a, a standard practice at least as many Wednesdays as we can, because at the end of the day, I don't care how you're hitting the ball. If your wedges are on point, you're going to be scoring pretty well. So we, sh- we appreciate you putting that one out there and looking forward to producing some more content on, on the Instagram, on the Twitter, um, you know, and, and chatting here on the podcast, both on, on Spotify and iTunes. So boys, always good to see you and uh, happy watching this weekend. Happy watching. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>